Jake from How Stuff Works. Uh, back with another episode on uh, your CNC series for designing your own rigs. This part of the uh, video will be based on a few questions that I've been asked uh, in regards to the program that I use, which is SolidWorks for my design work. Okay, in the previous videos, I've, I've pretty much rushed through the how to design components for your rig without sort of getting into the nitty gritty of how. I design them, how I make them, and how I come about my uh, my sizes, etc., and how I use the features within SolidWorks. Now, SolidWorks is um, quite an intuitive program, even though it has received a lot of bad rap lately in regards to crashing unexpectedly. One important thing that I've discovered in a lot of uh, crash reports, things like that, just to let your heads up, is that uh, remember to save your work. SolidWorks um, has a limited available memory allocation from what I can tell. Um, if you have too much going on in the system, the, the, ga the program, <laughs> I was going to about to say game, uh, the program will crash. Anyhow, so let's get into it. What we're going to do today is I'm going to show you some um, uh, integral tools within the program so that you can design your own parts based on the schematics you can find online or that come with your parts Okay, that you order. Okay, this will then translate on so that you can uh, produce your parts accurately um, with all the associated um, adjustment points. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so firstly what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a few uh, options here. Okay, so the first thing we'll do, we're going to create a new file. Okay, now in the SolidWorks uh, framework here, uh, we have uh, sections, uh, parts, and assemblies and then drawings okay so parts are made individually okay then you what you'll do is once you've got all your parts made you'll then make an assembly which you can import all those individual parts into okay and then once you've got your assembly done you can then move it on to a drawing okay which gives you all the a nice fancy um, uh, schematic drawing of your parts with all your measurements and etc so first of all we're going to go to a part we're going to do our parts so what we're going to do is we're going to make our, uh, while it loads, we're going to make our blank gantry plate, we're going to make a carriage block, we're going to make um, a y-axis gantry RHS tube. Now, I like to draw up my own parts based on the fact that it allows to give me experience on CAD drawing. Uh, a lot of people will use um, external sources. Um, if you do, one of those great sources, uh, let's see here is um, a site called GrabCAD. All right, so we go grabcad.com. I'll put that in the description down in the, in the uh, a link down in the description below. Okay, GrabCAD is really, really great. Once you create yourself a profile, okay, you can then go to the library here. All right, some fantastically talented individuals designed some absolutely magnificent uh, um, designs and, pro and uh, machinery here, all right? But once you go to the library, you type in your um, search. So in this case, we'll just look for Highwind. All right, Highwind are a, a great product to use for uh, linear motion, for rails and blocks. Okay, um, straight up here on the first one here, um, linear bearing rail, 20 mil, and a little bearing block. Okay, um, just checking to see if this is a 20 mil block, yep. QHE20CA, which is a straight uh, square block, <clears throat> okay, which effectively should marry the 20 mil linear bearing rail here on this one. They've been made by the same uh, author, which is great. Okay, so um, once you can download those, or you can find other items that you're interested in. Okay, and then what you can do is you can import them directly into your software that you choose, whether it be SolidWorks, Fusion 360, uh, AutoCAD programs, uh, anything else that deals with a 3D um, or even just a straight 2D profile. Okay, in regards to this one, as you can see here, it uh, includes SolidWorks files as well as step files. Okay, um, SolidWorks uh, part files is um, SLD PRT files. Okay, it means you can bring them straight in. You can uh, add them straight into your drawing, your program. So yeah, GrabCAD, fantastic source of, uh, of parts and information that you can use. Okay, 
So let's just jump back here. All right, <clears throat> but what we're gonna do is I wanna go through the process. I like, to, as I said, I like to draw my own drawings. All right, um, gives me experience and allows me to expand my abilities, okay? All right, so the first thing you wanna do is to create your own part, particularly in the SolidWorks format, is one of the first steps you need to do is um, select a plane that you wanna work on. You've got a front plane, top plane, and a right plane, okay? Um, these are simply to uh, operate within the axial environment of X, Y, and Z, all right, the 3D coordinates. But for us, at this stage, we're just gonna use the front plane. Okay, so we'll click front plane. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is, because we're just doing our gantry plate, a blank, it's a straight, simple, rectangular blank. We'll select up to the, uh, the um, options bar up the top here, and we'll select a rectangle. Nice and easy. And just, to, just a straight rectangle. Don't even have to set it to any specific dimension yet. Okay, so once we've done that, we'll select OK. We can, if we know the dimensions of it, yeah, you will notice that down um, at the bottom of that drawing, you can enter in the sizes of your parts. You can do that if you want to, but the reason I'm not doing it today is because I want to show you how to use some other tools, like the smart dimensioning options within the program. Okay, so moving on. The next thing we want to do is size up our blank plate. Okay, now, if you watched my previous videos in regards to that, particularly the one in regards to um, working out the general size of your, your gantry plates, you will notice that we came out with two, uh, two values. Um, 542 by 302, let me just double check on that. Okay, so let's go. All right, so once we've got our dimensions, as I said, you can enter that in down the bottom of the, uh, the, the object, or you can do this. If you go up to the top bar here, you see an option called Smart Dimensions. So if you select that, what you wanna do is then you will select the, uh, the line in your geometry or in your chain, click on that and drag out. Okay, and it gives you an exact measurement to the amount of decimal places that you set within your parameters for your, your, um, your drawing, okay? Generally, it gives two places, but you can, as you can see here, go down to, uh, I think it's seven decimal places, all right? I don't think you're ever gonna need anything more accurate than two decimal places. 542. Select our um, our native measurement factors. All right, so in my case, I'm using metric, so it'll be millimeters. Okay. <clears throat> or whatever the measurement um, factor is for the project that you are completing. Okay, so we do. There you go. So it's changed the height, even though it hasn't changed the size of your the rectangle in general. It has adjusted it to the to the length. Okay, so we'll do is we'll go tick. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little bit of an annoying thing um, if it happens here. Well, so to get our other dimension, we will click Smart Dimension again, select our our edge and we'll drag away. All right, so we wanted uh, 309. Okay, we'll go millimeters, tick. All right, so there it goes. That's what I was looking for. Do you see how it uh, it tipped out the the side of the, the, the box here? We don't want that, okay? The reason for that is because SolidWorks has a factor in it called dimension driving okay um, what you can do is you can leave it like this if you want or what you can do there's two options you can hit smart dimension again and we will come down from here drag down and modify that to 309 millimeters and that'll square everything up no nope, it's going to shift it off okay so you can generally do that and it will square it up for you but if it's not going to do that, what we'll do is we will we'll go use the option Control Z to undo our dimension changes. Okay, so this one here's still at 542. What we'll do is we'll delete this, okay, the 542, because that's still going to be 542. 
All we'll do is we'll double click on a 291.22 and change that to 309. Okay, now because it doesn't have a corresponding measurement here to adjust to, it'll keep it square. Okay, if you have a corresponding measurement here, what it'll do is it'll push out the two top point fixed points, fixture points here, the circles here and here. Okay, and it'll push that one of those out. Okay, um, and the drawer, for some reason, the program, I haven't worked out where to be able to change that, but what it does is it always drives from the, uh, the effectively, the top corner um, of the, if you were to flip the drawing in any direction, it will drive it from left to right. Okay, and it'll push it across. So in this case, you might have noticed it went from this corner and then when I changed that dimension, it pushed it out. So we ended up with um, a parallelogram, okay, instead of a rectangle. Okay, anyhow, moving on. So once we've set our dimensions here, all right, so that's the smart dimension uh, option. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're going to just create a simple straightforward plate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna exit out of the the, uh, the sketch panel okay so it's got our fixed panel and what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the features tab which sits underneath so obviously you had sketch there we're going to jump over to features now the next option we want to take is extruding out our plate okay so that's this option here extruded boss space okay what it does is it gives our object depth so what we'll do is we'll click on that okay and it brings up this extrude tab here all right, so the message is uh, a plane on which to sketch the feature or cross-section or an existing sketch to use for the feature, okay? Um, in this regards, we can, by selecting a plane, all right, which would be this plane here, the front plane, okay? As you can see the little icon on the underneath the mouse is selecting the plane, okay? Or what we do is we can select the, the a geometry or an existing sketch to use. In this case, we're just gonna select the geometry. So we'll click on here. All right, so what it uh, now slips into is it slips into a more three-dimensional uh, uh, positioning. Okay, so what it comes up now is it comes up with the Boss Extrude uh, tab, okay? Uh, it comes up with a from, and what you want is from the sketch plane. All right, in this case, you can use the surface face or plane, a vertex or an offset. We're not going to go use any of the other options. We will explore into those at a later date. So just at the moment, we're just going to use sketch plane. The next one is direction one. Okay. Now, um, the options under this is blind, up to vertex, up to surface, offset from surface, up to body and mid plane. In this regards, we just want to create a straight blank plate. All right. We're not going to be twisting it, turning it, flexing it in any way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to select blind, and then <clears throat> we what we want to do is we want to tell us tell the the program how uh, much depth we want to give that plate. In this regards, at the moment it's set for ten millimeters. In my other video, I received a lot of comments based on why did I choose to use a certain depth of material because I was at that time I was only putting six millimeters in there. Um, when it comes down to it my videos are strictly just tutorials on how to do things okay just keep that in mind please um, it's up to the individual user or designer to determine the thickness of the material they want to use okay understand clearly thicker is stronger and better okay don't get me wrong okay um, but with that depending on the material you use adds extra weight goes into other factors further on down the design process Okay, so in this regard, what we're going to do is we're going to put 12 millimeter. All right, there is an option within SolidWorks that allows you to um, color the parts. All right, so they make look like they're aluminium or steel or rainbow colored chocolate if you want it to be. Okay, so um, once we've done that, okay, there is a direction two which allows you to. Um, uh, place another amount you can actually set that in another in uh, different factors such as the from surface etc okay but we're not going to worry about that we're not worrying about the thin feature option here we'll work with thin features shortly um, in creating our RHS gantry uh, y-axis gantry tubing we'll work with that one later
okay? So once we've done those ones, we're just gonna go tick as okay. All right, so what that does is it now changes it from sort of an opaque through to a solid color like this, okay? So we've got our height, we've got our width, and just to be checking, making sure that we've set the depth right, we'll go back to our sketch tab, back to Smart Dimension. If you zoom in, all right, and select, see how the line's gone orange? If you click and select on that and drag out, you'll see it now says 12 millimeters. Okay? All right. Okay, so that gives us our, our Y-axis blank plate. You'll notice in my other videos I had sections chopped off giving it a little bit more of an aesthetic look. We'll worry about that when it comes time to having to do it. Some designers like to create um, very um, aesthetically pleasing shapes. One, it does two things. <coughs> Sorry, it does two things. One is to cutting away excess material reduces weight. Okay, can in improve balance. Um, but in general, I try and maintain a nice solid structure for my plates. All right, simply because it allows um, me to spread out the blocks better. It ensures that um, there's not too much weight forward or backward of, the, of those places, those points. Okay. Anyhow, so let's move on. So whilst, once we've got that done, all right, what we can do is we can move on to our next part. Okay. So, so far we've used um, planes, shapes, smart dimensioning, and boss extrude. We're gonna repeat those um, through the process. We're gonna create another part. This time we're gonna create a part which is our carriage block. Okay. Um, in this component, what we're going to do is we're going to actually try and create a general shape for my initial designs, I go on general shapes for the design aspect of the build, okay? What you can do later on down the track is, SolarWorks is great, I would highly recommend the product, it's fantastic, all right, is you can edit your components later on down the track once you know everything all fits together. You can edit the sketch, and what it'll do is it'll update it in your assembly. Okay, which is fantastic. All right, but at the moment, let's do our our carriage block. So once again, we're gonna select the front plane. We're gonna select our shape, okay? All right. Now this is interesting. What we're gonna do is we're going to select our shape here, okay? And the f next thing we wanna do is we'll find, we wanna find out what our um, parameters are for our shape. Okay, in this case, I've um, previously already gone through and looked for um, some design schematics already. We're going to be using HGH20CA um, guide blocks and rails. The reason for that is plain and simply because they are a nice, simple, um, round, um, oh, sorry, <laughs> round, <laughs> a square shape. Okay. Um, other um, block designs, they'll have flanges that come out here, okay, to Im to improve their um, boltability, okay, or uh, attachability to other fixtures, okay. But these will do fine because they're just simple and easy to work with. Okay, so the first thing what we want to do is we want to find out the the width of the block and the height of the block. Okay, so our width is indicated here by the W. So we go to HDH20CA. And we'll find go along and find W. In this regard, it's 44 millimeters wide. So we'll do, we'll just go back to SolidWorks. Do our smart dimensioning again. Right. Set that at 44. Tick. So to avoid, as I said before, the dimension driving, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to not don't allow that to happen. So what we're going to do is once we set 44, we're going to delete that indicator, that marker there. All right, so we'll just jump back. And now we want to deal with, find out the height of the block. Now, the thing is, what you need to understand is the, um, the height of the block in this drawing indicates the, H indicates the, from the bottom of the rail to the top of the block. 
So in this regard, it's 30, but the block itself, okay, is actually not that height. Okay, if you look here, H1, there's a difference between the bottom of the rail and where the bottom of the block is. So H1 on the drawing here is 4.6 millimeters. Okay, so what we need to do is you need to take 4.6 away from 30. Okay, so that gives us 25.4. So the, the actual block is only 25.4 high. So we'll grab Smart Dimension. So 25.4, and there we go. So that updates our updates our um, width and height. Okay. So what we can do is we can once we've got that, we can actually remove that. So it doesn't. Uh, if we do any other adjustments, it doesn't drive it in any direction we don't want it to. Okay. Now we're going to add a bit of definition to the uh, to the shape. Okay. As I said. Um, SolidWorks, I like to design my builds in a general shape using the general um, mechanics and shape of things. Okay, um, as you can see in this drawing here, the rail uh, has a profile on it. Okay, and the block matches that profile, obviously, allow it to slide backwards and forwards. Okay, um, in this one, we're just going to do a, a square cutout. Okay, and then when we do our rail, we'll make that uh, 0.25. Um, less or even just only point 0.1 less than the actual cutout for the in the block. What this does is it allows the um, there to be a slight difference um, when we make them together to allow the overall design to slide. Sometimes solid works if the tolerances are too tight it will actually technically join them together and you won't be able to move them in a in a motion um, simulation. That's what I've found anyhow. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, the next um, indication we're going to be looking at here is the WR, which is the width of the rail. Okay. Or we can also use N here, which gives us how far the rail edge uh, comes in from the edge of the block. So if we just look at N, which is 12 millimeters, we can go back to our drawing. And so the next tool we're going to use is an offset tool. Okay. So what we want to do is we just want to go up here. You'll see an option here under the sketch tab here called offset entities. All right. Um, and what we want to do is we want to set that at value N, which is 12 millimeters. Okay. But there's a whole heap of other options down below, below here. You've got add dimensions, reverse, select chain, bi-directional. Okay, so add dimensions means it'll add the dimension required. Okay, reverse will mean that it will go in the opposite direction as to what you want it to. Generally, if you've got a full connected chain like this, the reverse will mean it'll head onto the outside of the, the block. Okay, selecting chain means it will add a, an offset all the way around the chain of your geometry. Okay, so if you have four sides, you'll really see that you've got a, a chain all the way around the outside. And bi-directional means it'll go on the outside and on the inside if it can fit. Okay, but in this case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to deselect all of them. Okay, because we only want to go 12 millimeters from in from this geometry. So there we go. So as you can see, because I don't have reverse selected, all right it's gone and put it on the inside. You will have noticed that there was a yellow line, but there was an arrow pointing in to the inside of the, the drawing. Okay, and that's where it'll set it. So we'll do that again. But this time what we'll do is we'll go from the other side. See, there's a yellow line with an arrow. So click that there. Okay. All right, so jumping back to our drawing very quickly. Okay, the height of the rail, okay, HR, all right, which is here. Okay, so if we go along our drawing, find HR, the height of the rail is 17.5. Now, <clears throat> we have to, because we're only going from the base of the block into the block, what we need to do is take 17.5 and minus H1. Okay, so 17.5 minus H1 is 13.12.9. Alright, 
So we'll go offset again. 12.9. We'll select our geometry we want to go. And as you can see, it's got the yellow line, but it's got the arrow there. We'll click it, and there we go. Okay. So now we're going to do a bit of uh, uh, defining of our shape. So the next tool we're going to use is Trim Entities. Now Trim Entities, what it can do is it will um, get rid of any excess uh, geometries that you don't want, okay, that are going to interfere with your um, with your drawing, okay. Now there's a lot of options I haven't worked with at the moment. Power Trim Corner, Trim Away the Insides, Trim Away the Outside, okay. These work quickly to be able to do multiple functions all in one go, okay. We'll work on a lot of other the other tools and other options within um, SolidWorks later on in other tutorials. My plan is to do that, so keep an eye out. But for now, we're just going to go trim to closest. Okay. All right. So we're going to zoom in a little bit. We want to get rid of this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay. That leaves us our effectively uh, our block shape. It's not spot on perfect. It's nowhere near what you see there, but it's functional and it'll do what we want it to do. Okay, all right, so once we've got that done, okay, what we can do now is we can exit out of that function, out of the sketch function again. And we're gonna to go to our features and we're gonna extrude again. We're going to use select our face or our um, our sketch geometry, and as you can see, it's already set our our general blank. What we want to do is we find, want to find our length of our block, so L, which happens to be seventy-seven point five. So once again, we're going to go sketch plane. We'll go blind seventy-seven point five because we're just setting at a defined length, simple defined length. Okay, so when we've done that, we'll go OK, and it'll, it'll turn that into a solid shape. And as you can see, we've got our little cutout here for our rail to slide into. Okay, all right, so, <clears throat> so we've really just gone and replicated what we did in the first stage with the plate. Now, this is the next, uh, next cool feature I like in SolidWorks. It's the whole wizard um, function within SolidWorks. Okay, now if you go up under the features here, so we just use extruded boss space, we want to go across, okay, and we'll go to whole wizard. Okay, so we click on the whole wizard program within SolidWorks. Okay, and it brings up um, a whole new table here, okay. So it's labeled whole specifications, okay. You've got obviously a tick and cross if you don't want to, if you want to cancel it, but then you've got two tabs under that. One is type. And one is positions. Okay, below that you've got a favourites, which you can actually select and save your favourite um, uh, fittings. Okay, so if you're in an industry that produces a lot of the same parts continually, okay, then and you need to obviously replicate certain fixtures in certain ways, but the parts are always going to be different, and you can save your um, your whole specifics to favourites and then quickly add them in. It saves you a bit of time. Okay, but below that we've got a whole type. Okay, so here we have counter bore, counter sink, the whole straight tap, tapered tap. Okay, legacy hole here is different as you can see. Legacy hole is based on engineering um, industries that deal with a lot of outdated tech, outdated machinery that need to produce very specific sized um, holes to fit very specific size bolts um, for industrial applications, okay? Some that don't fit within current um, manufacturing standards, okay? Counter bore slots, counter sink slot, and then a standard slot. Now, uh, moving on here, we're just going to be using a standard hole for this, okay? All right, the reason for that is this face here that the hole is going to go into will just be directly attached to your gantry plate through a hole in the gantry plate. Um, there's no need to put um, uh, counter boards or counter sinks 
in here really when it comes down to it and just remember this is just a an indication piece all it does is allows you to make sure you get all your holes lined up in the right spots okay <clears throat> moving forward so below this we have our standard um, setup okay what that means is um, depending on your country if you are um, imperial or metric okay you'll select imperial inch ANSI inch and metric there's also um, other fitting types so British Standard um, ISO okay um, and other specific uh, measure uh, uh, standard types for us it's just gonna be standard um, ANSI metric we're going to type, which gives you all the different uh, types here. Dowel holes, dowel holes will, um, when produced, okay, so you'll select the, the, the dowel size from the drop down menu. But what it'll do is you'll notice when the part is produced, it will more than likely be slightly bigger to allow for glue, for example. Okay, um, you've got helicoil tap drills, screw clearances, tap drills, all that sort of thing. But for us, we're just going to use drill sizes. Below that is whole specifications, okay. Um, in this regard, okay, so the, the, the holes for the actual blocks themselves, okay, let's have a look here. We're going to be M5 by, uh, the M5, okay. Um, component, uh, uh, holes, threaded holes, okay by 16 deep okay oh no sorry sorry that's for the rail my mistake um, we're going to go m5 by 6 okay these are these ones here are for the block m5 by 6 so we'll jump back sorry I uh, made that mistake so what we'll do is we will <clears throat> select our appropriate size six millimeter diameter uh, now the end condition here, all right, uh, you may have noticed in my previous videos that I tried to get um, a through um, uh, value onto my, through my brackets, through my RHS tubes and it, for some reason SolidWorks wouldn't um, just limit it to the depth of the blind, it, it just went all the way through, right down through the linear guide blocks okay uh, very frustrating I don't know why it did that but um, just one of those things you just have to keep an eye out for when you do your drawings if you're say working on a, a program say it's for a school application okay um, say an assessment project you're gonna watch want to watch out for those things just for that finishing detail but in this case because the holes are only going a specific distance into the block we're going to be using blind and uh, as we said before, they were M5, uh, M5 by 6 millimeters. Okay. All right, and we want to set our blind depth at 6 millimeters. Okay. Okay, so once we've got our, once we've got all our setup ready to go, okay, uh, we'll go to positions. Now, when we select the, to be able to put the hole on the part, we need to go to the positions tab. Okay, so what we need to do is says here, select the face for the hole or slot position. To create holes on multiple faces, click 3D sketch. Now, we're only going to be putting them on one face. 3D sketch means you can put them on the top face, the side face, the front face, things like that. Okay, but for us, we're just using the top, this top face here. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll click there. Okay, and as you can see, it comes starts with a pencil and it tells you where, shows you the uh, the the position where you're going to put your hole now you only need to roughly place this okay all right now the thing with SolidWorks is is you can multiple place your holes in groups if you want or you can place them individually all right for adjustment purposes in my this case we'll put them on as individual holes okay but when we come to do the whole wizard for the final slot placing we just do them all as in a big group okay the reason we do them singularly here is to allow us so we can dimensionally adjust them correctly okay 
because if you, what you can do, what would happen is the the program may drive once again. It may drive the the uh, the holes in a manner that you don't want them to go. So we'll quickly just repeat this four times. So uh, just uh, whilst we're doing this here, if you uh, are enjoying the videos, okay, please uh, consider um, subscribing, liking and sharing my videos. Um, if you would like a further video on a different topic within SolidWorks or, or CNC in general or any other topic for that matter, just drop me a comment below or um, contact me on how stuff work, which is at email how stuff works d at gmail.com or one word how stuff work d uh, at gmail.com <laughs> it wouldn't let me have how stuff works that was already taken um so yeah just send me a topic there and we'll see what we can do for you anyhow so now we've got our holes in our our block what we want to do now is we want to um uh, move them around this is a little bit of a, a, a interesting topic that I do see a lot on uh, on forums such as Reddit and on the internet. People ask, "How do I move holes once I've got them in place?" Okay, when I use the Smart Dimension tool, it doesn't work. Okay, you need to use a very specific set of steps to move each individual hole where you want them. Okay, but to do this, the easiest way I've found is you go over to your tree here. You find the hole you want to move, as you can see in the drawing there, it highlights it as orange. Okay, you'll go across the little arrow next to that uh, item and you'll hit down it'll, and it'll expand it out. Underneath that, you've got two options. You've got dash, sketch two, and then sketch three. Okay, now sketch three relates to the radius, the depth, and the finish at the bottom. In this regard, it's got a, um, a chamfer finish at the bottom with a radius of, um, of uh, two and a half millimeters. But we're not worrying about that. We're worrying about this, this factor right here, with the, the minus in the bracket sketch two. If you click on that once, it brings up a little sub menu here. Okay, and what you wanna do is you wanna go up to the edit sketch option here. So there's the pencil with a with the drawing on um, a graph type paper there. And you'll click on that once. Okay, now your drawing will change, all the other holes will disappear, and you'll be just be left with a little blue asterisk here. Okay, what you want to do now is you want to go to the Smart Dimension, okay, because it's gone into the back into the sketch tab, and you want to go to Smart Dimension. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll go back to your schematic drawing here. Okay, for us, what we want to do is we want to find the value of how far the drill holes are apart in relation to the center of the object. So if you look at this value here, you'll see C um, in the, the diagram here. So we'll go down to our tab here, HGH20CA, and we'll find C. Now for C, all right, it's uh, 36 millimeters. Okay, so they're 36 millimeters apart. So half of 36 is, uh, is 18 millimeters. There you go. All right, so we'll quickly go back to our drawing. <clears throat> now, your smart dimensioning tool, if you first select your dot, okay, which is the center of your hole, all right, and then what you do, what it does is it brings up this menu here, all right, and then what you want to do is you want to find the center point of this line. Now, if you see here, if you look carefully, you'll notice that the, the, the center mark is changing between white and red, uh, white and orange, sorry. Okay, what you want that to be is you want it to be orange. That means you're selecting the center of the line. And then what you do is you just simply drag out. It'll center your value. You want to change that to 18. Or whatever the specification is for your drawing. All right, so that moves that, so it's 18 millimeters away. Okay, so you select tick. Go Smart Dimension again. But this time we want to set the hole away from the edge. Okay. And in this regard, if we quickly drop back over to our drawing here. All right. 
um, the the center point all right so which is center is b1 all right so we look at our draw our, our selections here b1 says it's six millimeters away all right so we'll type in six millimeters once again um Try and find a drawing or a schematic that's in your native measurements, okay? Converting stuff over can be a bit of a pain, okay? All right. All right, so once we've done that, okay, that'll have positioned our hole 18 millimeters from center, six millimeters in. What we'll do is up over in the top corner over here, in the top right hand corner, you'll see, um, uh, an arrow with the drawing which means you accept the drawing but then you also have an X which means it'll cancel whatever you've done and go back to your 3D your your features um, your extruded drawing okay so what we're gonna do is we're happy with that so we're gonna click the arrow okay and that hole now is set six millimeters to center and 18 millimeters from the center all right so now that we've done that we're gonna go and do the others So don't forget to have a look. If you're a CNC uh, in, hobbyist enthusiast, all right, don't forget to go and view my other videos so far. Um, I'm trying to build up quite a simple, easy to follow um, guide. The reason I've, uh, I'm doing this channel is simply because um, a lot of videos out on the internet at the moment, they, they're built um, by people who have a lot of experience um, uh, in the field, but they're not really taking true beginners into uh, into uh, consideration when it comes to the uh, the design of their videos. The the videos are very rushed, um, or they they want to try and move on with the more interesting parts, and they don't take those beginners into account. So my videos um, I like to tr I'm trying to make sure that um, oh, I don't think I grabbed that no I didn't oh, I'm going to escape out of that I didn't quite grab that as you can see because I didn't grab that center point quite uh, spot on okay it took me into another value there, we'll try that. there we go 18 um, and yeah this that's pro, uh, sort of moved on to my desire to be able to do this because I do help a lot of people on reddit and other um, uh, forum sites with problems on how they they can fix their their rigs or even just uh, get them up and going so if, uh, if you can, if you do like these videos and feel that they may be able to help other individuals, share them across, okay? I'd really appreciate it, it does help. The more likes, the more subscribers, the more shares I get, the more I'll feel that uh, my work is appreciated. It can be, oh, it does make it easier if you do zoom in to the, uh, it does help if you can zoom in in a lot of factors. A lot of the fine um, measurements um, uh, for moving parts in certain parts of the program um, become the resolution becomes a lot better when you um, when you uh, zoom in, okay, and then zoom out it becomes a lot more coarse. Okay, all right. So there we go. Very simple. We'll exit out of there. 
Okay, so we've got our four bolt holes. Our bolt holes, they're not, they're obviously not threaded. They're obviously not um, chamfered or countersunk in any way. Okay, but what this does is it gives us an accurate representation of what things were going to look like. Or not an accurate representation, but a rough representation of what things are going to look like for us when it comes down to it. Okay, so well, now that we've done that there, we're going to move on to our next part. Now the next part, we're going to uh, make a very quick um, RHS tubing. Okay, now my machine um, at uh, at home here is... Uh, is 2.4 meters by 1.5 meters. Oh no, no, sorry. It holds a sheet of 2.4 by 1200 millimeter material. Okay, it's quite a large machine. And I received a few comments in regards to the way that I'm showing my design here on YouTube. People are saying uh, uh, that'd be very weak. It wouldn't uh, withstand to any real forces, things like that. Once again, uh, I want to uh, uh, um, stress, okay, uh, that um, my designs for instructional purposes only. It's up to the individual what they want to build their rig out of as to how it will respond later on. Okay, now in regards to when you go to make your rig, depending on what you make it out of, um, I would highly recommend materials are used that you can weld, aluminium or steel. Okay, the reason for that is, is in these tutorial videos I will show you how to make the design so that you can bolt them together initially for full adjustment so you can get square level etc okay and then I highly recommend after that that you weld find somebody who can weld if you can't okay that can weld the material that you need to be welded okay so that because welding is a stronger fixturing system than any other can't lie can't can't beat it all right okay so <clears throat> our next thing is going to be our RHS tube okay so we're going to use a few little options here okay I'm going to do this one now just remember the measurements I use are measurements that I can gain locally from my uh, local suppliers etc okay so I'm going to dimension I'm going to smart dimension this so we're going to use um, uh, 65 <clears throat> to that. Once again, we're going to get rid of this measurement once it's set. Okay, that allows to mean to dimension off this one without it being driving and pushing the the boundaries out. We want 65 by 35 millimeter RHS tubing. Okay, always remember, the bigger the gear you get, one, you can get more rigidity and strength, but then you add extra weight. Extra weight means more work later, loaded onto the rig later on down the track. Okay, always remember that, okay? If you're clever and really, really know your engineering and you weld things together, which is gonna make two individual parts effectively one part, then you remove the need for overall weight, okay? All right, so, now we've got our RHS tubing general shape. All right, we're going to need to try and represent the RHS tubing, RHS tubing as it would be when you buy it from the shop or the machine shop. Now, SolidWorks has a great little nifty tool here called um, filleting. Okay, most CAD design programs have filleting options. All right. Um, when you buy RHS tubing, if it's square finished, that's great, just leave it like this. But most RHS tubing has a chamfer on the outer edge, makes it more comfortable to hold, uh, and things like that. So we're just going to chuck some of those on there. So if you go up to the top bar in the sketch tab here, you'll see a uh, sketch fillet. Okay, and what you want to do is you want to set your fillet size. Uh, so you will see entities to fillet, okay, here. But firstly, you want to ignore that one. Okay, and you want to go down to fillet parameters. You want to be able to put in a value, okay, which say we're going to go two millimeters. All right, two millimeter fillet. Okay, and we're going to then go over to our drawing. We're going to select the um, the entities that we want to be able to fill it. So as you can see, I'm going to put click on each part individually. If you select the wrong ones, the fillets will go absolutely nuts. Okay, so we've got fillet one, two, three, and four on each corner. 
will go okay. And as you can see, zoom in, we fill it. It's got a nice little round edge. Okay, if you go into your into your hardware supply store, etc., with a set of vernier calibers, you could probably measure them. So then you can make your drawings to match perfectly. Okay, so in this regard, it's going to put a two millimeter radius on your uh, your desired um, chain or your part. Okay, so we'll go tick that. Okay, and now the next part we're going to do is we're going to do a chain offset. All right, what this will do is it will make it so it represents RHS tubing that you're going to use. Okay, um, what you can then do is so you go here, you go up to our offset entities. Okay, and depending on the thickness of the tubing that you choose, okay, you can enter that in here. In this regard, we're going to use three millimeter RHS tube. We're going to go by chain. All right. And what we're going to do is, depending on how this goes, we're going to click on our one of our geometries. Obviously, once again, we can see our little yellow arrow there. We'll click, and it goes on the inside. Okay. Now, as you can see here, the because the internal geometry doesn't support a two millimeter chamfer straight away, all right? We can add one in there. All right, to make that sort of look a little bit more pretty. Well, once again, um, as I said, don't forget to save your work once you get sort of up and going, okay? SolidWorks doesn't like unsafe files too much, okay? All right, so this is our sketch of our um, of our RHS tubing. It's not 100% uh, accurate. One, I haven't measured a piece of RHS tubing, and two, this is just to give you the idea of how to go about it. Okay, so we'll do that, go okay. What we'll do is we'll jump out, we'll exit out of here. All right, and what we're going to do is go to features. We're going to go to extrude again. All right, we're going to select our plane that we want to, or or, or fe sketch a feature on our sketch to extrude it out. Okay. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to tell it we're going to go blind again because we're going to make it set uh, at a certain uh, certain depth, and then we're going to go say fifteen hundred millimeters. Very long, I understand. No, actually, we'll just change that to 500. Go 500. All right. Now, as you can see, it's just extruding out as a solid block. Okay. Now, below these options here, we have direction two, and then we've got thin feature. What we're going to do is we're going to turn on the thin feature. All right. But what we're going to do is we're going to get that to set that to match our previous sketch, which was only three millimeters. Boom. There we go. Okay, so that will match. Oh no, it's gone on the it's gone on the opposite direction. We don't want that. sure here we've got to make sure we get it so it faces the right direction otherwise it's going to blow out our drawing okay so it looks like it's done it there this time by changing by hitting the opposite changing the reverse direction instead of it setting the three mil outward from the blue line it set it inward which is where we want it to be okay so once we've uh, once we've finished the extrude there we go there's our RHS tube now um, Using the steps that we've used so far today, you'll notice in one of my other videos I created some uh, some right angle brackets. Okay, you can use those steps to be able to make those right angle brackets. Okay, um, and then use the hole wizard to place the holes. Um, and then what you can do is, if you take the length of your RHS tube, for example, to a machine shop, what they can do is they can whack them on a water jet. They can do whatever they need to do. Okay, um, and then they can have those tapped in place for you. They can tap all the holes, or you can just hand tap, drill, and tap them if you want. Okay, okay. So that's that part there. All right. So what we're going to do now is now that we've got a, a few basic parts, I'm going to take you through the process of fixing your carriage blocks onto your plate. The methods I use here will be used for all of your other parts. Okay. 
Very simple, very straightforward. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go File New. We'll go Assembly. Okay, so we're not creating a new part, we're actually creating an assembly. So we're going to bring all the parts we've created so far into one drawing. So we'll go OK. Okay, so basically this, what the screen's brought up for us here is um, it's brought up all our previously saved files. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to jump back quickly, okay, to our, our drawings and we'll save them. Okay, because if we haven't saved them, it's not going to add them to our list of parts to assemble. Now the good thing about SolidWorks is you don't need to create individual parts um, whole as a whole, okay? Um, you can just um, create the one part, rotate it, flip it, etc. Um, in any way that you want, okay? And use it multiple times. Go RHS, RHS one. Okay, so now that we've saved our, our um, objects, what we can do now is we're going to insert our components. Okay, so we'll go up to the insert components option up in the assembly tab at the top. I just clicked on it. Okay, and it's because we've saved our previous uh, our previous parts down the bottom here. Okay, it's populated them in the part assembly to insert box here, which is really really good. Okay, so what we can uh, do now is we will remembering what we labeled our parts as okay so the first one is p1 which is plate which is the plate so we'll click on that and we'll come out here all right and the system will place it in the assembly area okay click done beautiful okay so the next one is what we want to do is we want to bring uh, our next part which is we want four carriage blocks so four of those so we'll go click once Okay, now, as you can see, they're not, what we need them to do is we need them to be able to be connected to the back of our plate. Okay. All right, so what we need to do is we do need to adjust the position of the, the part. Okay. So what we want to do is you want to click X once. Oh, no, sorry. There. Okay, we go, uh, we should have gone, should have gone Y once and then X twice. Okay, and what that does now is it puts us in a position where we can later on once I show you how to mate parts, okay, allows us to attach them on. So what we want to do is we want to repeat that four times. Once. There we go. And we can continue to do this um, for as many times as we actually need a, the, the part. As you can see, I did uh, Y axis once, X axis once. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, now the next part that we need to take care of is um, a function within SOLIDWORKS called mating. Okay, now it's really important that you get the mating steps in the right sequence. Okay, the reason for that is if you don't, um, it will create um, mating errors um, later on down the track for you, and if it can ruin your whole drawing and design, uh, um, simply because the alignment issues of it are 
or not right. And then when you go to have parts manufactured, they'll be incorrect. Okay, so it's pretty important that we get this right. So the first thing you want to do is you want to um, select the the face that you want to mate together. Okay, I highly don't recommend mating edges or vertices. Okay before you made a face. Okay, so do a face first. All right, so all you do is you want to uh, click once. Okay, and it'll change to highlighted in dark blue. Then you got this, all these options here. Okay, and what you want to do is you want to go up to here to mate. It's a paperclip symbol. I'm going to click on that. Wait a second, depending on the processing power of your computer. Okay, and so it'll change the drawing of your part to um, transparent. Okay. What we want to do is we want to find what we want to mate it to. Okay, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top here to the view icons up the top here. We'll select the down arrow. Okay, and it does that for our drawing. What we want to do is we want to be able to view the back side of our um, gantry plate. So what we'll do is we're going to go down here to the back side. Okay, and we'll spin it around. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to just click in the middle. Of the of the plate okay and then what we're going to do is we want to tick we want to tick that so that what that's done is now it's going to mated the two parts together you're probably going well that's not where we want our carriage block fair enough okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to quickly flip our view again okay so we can see the the vertices or the edges that we want to mate together now okay so what we want to do is we want to select the edge that we want to mate Okay, we'll click that, do the mate option again, right, and then obviously, as you can see, we want to select the, the line or the edge that we want to mate to, so I'll click on that there. Okay, now, that puts us on the very edge. Now, if you're happy to, ha I don't uh, tend to place my components right on edges of anything, I like to have a little bit of a buffer, uh, in a way, so it provides a protective sort of thing. I'd rather have something hit the edge of the gantry plate instead of an expensive component. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to um, put my components a little bit in, five, 10 millimeters, whatever you choose. But uh, to do that in this environment, okay, so once you've got them mated together, there's an option here called distance. Okay, now if you click on this icon, it brings up a measurement distance here. Now, once you've got your two edges mated, what you can do is you can tell it, I want to have um, a five, 10 millimeter distance. So if you go five, enter, okay, and then tick, it's now gonna distance that block five millimeters from the edge of the material. Okay, we'll do the same, so we'll mate. Down, and then we'll set distance once again to five millimeters. Okay, I'd rather have that little bit of material that will effectively protect a vulnerable piece of expensive material from being damaged. I can happily replace a bit of 12 mil aluminium or steel, um, but not have to wait two weeks to get a new block. Okay, from China or America or another supplier. Okay. All right, so once we've done that there, that's obviously going to, if you click on this arrow here with mates, you've got a coincident and two distances. Okay, coincidence means um, a direct mate, where distance is a coincidence plus um, a distance mate. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to quickly go uh, and place our other components.
Okay, so we're back again. Now the important part here is you need to make sure that you set your measurements exactly the same. So if you need to write them down, make sure you set them exactly the same. Okay, otherwise um, when you come time to be able to put in your parts, um, then you're going to find that uh, alignment's going to be hard. I did get a lot of comments in regards to why I use two sets of rails um, on my gantry plates. Um, you'll notice on a lot of uh, machines, particularly also industrial machines, that they use um, single rails for the X axis but uh, double rails for the Y axis. Okay, I like to use double rails on all axis, it gives it just better strength overall. And um, if you take the time and, uh, and incorporate the necessary um, adjustment points, say slot points instead of fixed holes, it does allow you some room for movement. Okay. Um, now, I would highly recommend always putting in double rails. Okay, it gives strength, rigidity, gives strength, uh, as I said, strength, but also it allows for you to ensure that um, everything's um, bolted down nice and tight. Okay, so in regards to this, so we've got our, our block pieces here. Okay, all right, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how we use the hole wizard to be able to place the holes. Um, uh, through the front plate here so that they match exactly where we want them to be um, in alignment with the the, uh, the carriage blocks. Now this is going to be the what you noticed before with me placing the blocks is the exact same method that you will use for placing your RHS tube, for placing your brackets, okay, and for placing those holes to secure those in the adjustment holes. Now, very important that you Okay, that when you decide on how you're going to build your rig is whether you're just going to use bolts or if you're going to weld. As I said before, welding is the best, okay, but if you can't weld or can't find someone to weld for you at a reasonable cost, then bolts might just be your option, okay. But you do need to have adjustable, um, I'd say, slot holes in the parts to allow for that um, amount of adjustment okay even if it's one or two millimeters just to give you that little bit of adjustment room okay because um, your your concrete slab might be out your your um, your table might be out your work table might be out and you need that to get things up and square okay okay anyhow so to be able to place our holes, we're going to use, once again, we're going to use the hole wizard um, set up, but this time we're going to put slot holes in. Um, but first of all, we need to be able to see where our where our holes are going to go. As you can see here, it's just, just a solid plate. So to be able to position the holes, we need to use uh, change the, the view of the plate here to a transparent one. So to be able to do that, we'll click on the plate once. It'll go dark blue like that. Okay, and what you need to do is you need to go up to the top row of icons here and there's one here that has your assembly okay with a little eye over it and you can change its transparency so if you click on that it basically makes that technically effectively invisible it's still there but it's invisible okay but now you can see the position of your carriage blocks and the position of the holes of those carriage blocks behind them this is important because it allows you to ensure that you put all your holes and your adjustable slots in the right spots exactly where you want them Okay, so what we'll do now is in the assembly tab here, the um, the whole wizard isn't referenced directly here. It's actually under the assembly tab here in feature. So if you click on the little down arrow and go whole wizard, okay, what you can do now is you can um, use the whole wizard uh, program again, sub program. It's exactly the same here as it is with the uh, placing holes into your carriage block so you can use what you've learned before okay but the only thing is here what we're going to do is we're going to decide what type of um, hole we want now as I just said there were lots of different holes you had uh, counter bore counter sunk holes slot holes counter counter bore holes okay depending on how you want the finish of your plate to look say we're using 12 millimeters here if you go and choose the, a bolt that has a 4mm um, socket head cap screw that has a 4mm head on it, what you can do is you can choose the counter bore hole or slot hole option here 
And then once you've finished adjusting and tightening, all right, if you set that right, the, the top of the bolt head will come flush with the, the face of the material. Very professional, very neat, very tidy. If you do go that way, highly recommended, as this is gonna be your baby, okay? You want it to look as great as possible, okay? All right, so um, once again, what we're gonna do is, but in this case, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use just a straight slot, because it's just a little bit easier to work with, okay? Straight dimensioning, okay? Once again, we're gonna use metric, we're gonna use drill sizes, okay? Now, the this hole here, okay, is a M5, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is, I like to provide a tiny little bit of movement room, 0.25 of a millimeters movement room. Okay, so what I do is, instead of a straight five millimeter hole, okay, I'll put 5.5, it gives 0.25 mil on either side. Okay, okay, and then the slot length, we need to just decide on how far you want to be able to adjust it. If we make it a 10 mil slot, that's pretty darn generous, okay? But if you feel that you're gonna have that much range of error in your positioning, then go with that, okay? But we'll just use 10 millimeters from now for here, okay? The next option, the end condition, is what we want to set as. So we're only wanting it to go through the plate. We don't want it going through the block, into the blocks. We just want it going through the plate. So what we do is we set it to a blind condition and then we set the depth of our material, which is 12 millimeters. Okay, now options are you can have a near side countersink on it, all right? But if you select the countersink hole type up here, it'll put one of those in there automatically. Okay, so once we've selected our slot, of course, all our other details, we'll go to positions tab, okay? And we'll select the face for the hole or slot position. So we just want to click, you can click just anywhere. Okay, as long as it's on the face of your uh, of your actual part that you want to put it in. Okay, now SolidWorks um, has a little bit of an annoying factor here that I've found is that when you go to put a slot in, it'll put it um, horizontally all the time. Okay, and there's no direct option to say, I want to have my slot hole vertical. You can't click any buttons, you can't rotate it that I've been able to find. Okay, so, but I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. Okay, so what you want to do now is you want to take your slot hole, okay, and what you want to do is, as you can see there, see how when you move it into a correct spot, there's an orange dot in the middle, and then a plus sign, okay, that means it's centrally located over your hole, alright, so you want to click on that, okay, okay, so as you've just got to put it a 10 millimeter slot, that's 5.5 um, millimeters wide, okay, so what you want to do is you want to go and repeat that, Actually, I think those are those are M6s for some reason. For some reason it's going to put that in there as an M6. But anyhow, that's okay. We're just going to work with this for now. Okay. So do, uh, it's critical, as you can see, it's critical that you double check all your drawings. All right. This is I know it's probably not very professional in regards to the um, to the fact that I'm trying to show people how to produce a finished almost an almost finished product. Okay, but right now we're just going to try and get this wrapped up here, because this is going to be our last part of our video for today, alright, because as it is, it is just a simple video on how to use SolidWorks features. Um, if there are other programs that you want me to show you how to use, okay, uh, please let me know in the comments down below, or as I said, in the email provided to you earlier, which is howstuffworkd at gmail.com. Um, I will try and reply to your emails and your comments, okay? Um, it does help me a lot in trying to work out what uh, viewers want to see. Okay, alright, so we've got our, our slots, okay? The reason I put slots on all of these is simply because it allows us to adjust. Okay. All right, so now they're all sideways. Unfortunately, we don't want them facing that way. We want them vertically. Okay, so to be able to do adjust this figure or the position of the slot, okay, what we need to do is similar to us positioning the drills in the carriage blocks. Okay, so you have to find the 
the slot value or the object here, which is in the tree over the side here. You need to click on the down arrow. Okay. Um, as you can see here, see the uh, the indication down here, the unsaved document notification has not been saved for at least 20 minutes. I'm in a, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm in a risk zone for the uh, program to crash. Okay, so get in there and save. Um, hopefully we won't have that problem, we're just going to get on with it. Okay, so going back to the, the slots. Once again, we've got that minus in the bracket sketch one and then sketch two. What we want to do is we just want to deal with the sketch minus sketch one option. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to go up into that edit sketch again. Okay, what that does is it, it gets rid of, it changes all the comp other components except for our original slot hole. Okay, original slot one, all the others are just asterisks. Okay, and our original one has 10 millimeters on it. Now, it took me quite a while to work this one out and with a few tutorial um, videos and uh, forum helps, they weren't very, very clear. But once I worked it out, it was very easy. Once you go into edit sketch, you'll notice that on the end of your slot holes, there's the blue dots. Okay, all right. What you wanna do is you wanna highlight that blue dot so it goes orange. And then what you wanna do is you wanna click it and hold down your left mouse button and then what you want to do is you want to drag it. See how it changes to blue? You want to drag that around. And then if you look at the bottom, where the mouse is, down the bottom there, okay, if you watch it carefully, oh no, that's not very good because you can't see it. Okay, so see how that, uh, that white box appears with the straight line in it? Okay, that means that you've gone and changed the whole slot position from horizontal to vertical. So you, what you'll do is you'll let it go, you'll let go of the mouse button, you'll hit tick here, and then what you do is you'll exit out of save and exit out of the sketch. And when you go back, all right, as you can see, my holes here, I've actually set these as six, not five millimeter diameter holes, okay? actually meant to be five m5 by six millimeters deep not the other way around okay not very professional of me i know but by adjusting that first that first hole it's gone and adjusted all the others as well automatically it's great okay it's fantastic if you need to do bulk holes quickly but in regards to the the carriage block holes the reason why i had them all separately is because i wanted to adjust them all to separate dimensions Okay, um, if you try and um, adjust all of them in one go, it can have um, uh, a less of an effective result as to what you're expecting. Okay, okay, so in regards to that, how I've done that there, all right, that will basically put all your slot holes for your adjustments up and down. Okay, now you'll, once again, as I said, you'll use that whole wizard option once you've placed your RHS tube and objects such as that. Okay, it will actually, um, you can use the hole wizard and adjust your slot holes and your other holes in regards to that for your RHS tube. Okay, if uh, at all you're interested in me showing how that is done, please drop me a comment below. Okay, um, what we'll do is I'll do another quick video on the angle brackets, making the RHS tube. Okay, my intention is to make another video like this for the x-axis, the y-axis, the z-axis, and we'll go through the whole process. It really, really is helpful. The videos are longer, but they really are useful. Um, also, um, in my videos, I have included a timestamp at the start, so if you want to jump to any specific part of the video to give you help on how to do stuff, then you can quickly jump there, okay? without having to watch the whole video all over again or try and scroll through to find a specific place. Anyhow, so what that does is, once we're happy with those holes, what we can do is we can then click on our, our plate again. What we can do is, where we went to transparency, we can turn that off, okay? And then what we can do is we can change our view to an angle, and as you can see here, all right, that basically exactly shows us exactly where our holes are gonna be. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, guys, is I'm going to wrap it up here with this one. Okay, what we'll do in the next video 
is I will take you through the process of um, setting up your x-axis um, plates okay and your linear rail and the methods you use to be able to put the serial chains of your drill holes in place okay um, now as I said before I use dual rail uh, on my axes okay for the strength purposes a lot of people don't agree with that makes alignment quite hard okay um, but in this case it'll work beautifully okay because we'll have the or everything produced in a machine shop which will do everything to you would be hoping within 0 0.001 um, of accuracy all right guys so uh, once again thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video please subscribe like and share it out there okay the more likes and shares I get it'd be fantastic and it does help me out a lot seeing if people are interested um, and uh, yeah if there is a topic that you want me to attach to or try and make a video on send me an email alrighty guys thanks for watching see you next time bye